and welcome to War Room for Courageous Wives. Um, and today I have condemnation and the feeling of failure on my heart. Um, you know, we, uh, recently we've been talking a lot about um, having the choice, the choice to follow the Holy Spirit or be flesh driven and follow um, your flesh. And, um, you know, and although we are working really hard to follow the Holy Spirit and crucify our fleshes and not listen to that, that old self, right? And to follow our new self, our new creation that we are in Christ and follow the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, um, it can be hard and sometimes we fail and I just want to share with you what God has been saying to me on this topic um, and, and I just want to share what's on my heart you know if you feel like you failed in your marriage by um, following your flesh instead of the Holy Spirit just remember that there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus God says um, I'm restoring you um, as if it never happened as if you never failed you know at the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all our sin no matter what it is once you repent God that's it God cleanses you and he forgives you and it's on to the next you know you pick up right where you left off you know there's an ocean of love grace and peace in God's word we have to remember to stand on it cling to it and believe it you know if you have fallen get back up you know that is what God is telling me he's saying get back up continue to pursue God you know God has a plan for all of our lives you know, no matter how many times we fail how many times we fall how many times we have to go back over that mountain how many times we have to get back on that bike um the plan doesn't change because you you failed it doesn't you know god understands what you're facing um he understands how you're feeling you know he knew you would fall before you did he knew um that you would go through this trial and um, he allowed you to be subjected to it um the word of God says in Proverbs 24 and 16, um, though a righteous person falls seven times, he will get up, but a wicked person will stumble into ruin. You know, because you are seeking God, because you are studying his word, because you are getting on your face and you're praying and you're trying, God knows your heart. And so you are a righteous person. And so each time you fall, you can get right back up. And I know the word of God says seven times, but that's, you know, of course it's many times, you know, it it doesn't matter. I can go beyond seven. You know, that was just used, um, you know, in, in the word to describe uh, it to us so that we can understand that it doesn't matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up. Um, you know, the plan doesn't stop because you messed up. You know, that's what grace is for. We have to remember, like I mentioned earlier, there there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Zero. None. Zip. None. Nada. Okay, you are completely and eternally set free from condemnation. So do not put that on yourself. But if you do find yourself in a tough spot right now and you're under condemnation, condemnation rather than conviction, because that's different. Conviction, God will convict us. But if you're feeling um, condemned or under self-loading rather than seeing yourself worthy in Christ's sight, remember, even in the midst of your worst struggles, your biggest failures and most trying times, God is there. He directs our paths, he heals our hurts, and he brings beauty from the ashes of those who turn to his grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We have to remember that. God knew what what um God knew we would make mistakes, right? He he's not going to just redeem you. He's going to redeem the time. He's going to give you another chance to to prove yourself, to show your worth. He's going to do that for us. Um he does it time and time again. So what's the next step in this? The next step is to get back up and radically seek God like never before and submit to his word. Get to a place where your mind is made up to follow God's word and pursue peace. You know, break through what happened when you submit to his word. Um, you know, and submitting to his word means agreeing to it, agreeing to what it says, and then and then doing it. Let peace be the mediator in everything that you do and submit to God's word. It's not enough to just read it and declare it. We have to know God's word so that it's stored in our hearts. Um, Billy Graham recently tweeted, um, do you want your faith to grow? 
then let the Bible begin to saturate your mind and your soul. You know, meditating on God's word will cause a, um, a shift in a way that you see things. The way you see things um, is the way that God delivers them to you. And he delivers things to us through his word. So meditate on his word. Put it in your heart. Um, you know, we are to repent and believe. That's the next step. Repent and believe God's word. We are to submit to God's ways and trust him to know what is right and then do it. We are to devote ourselves to his path and trusting his timing. We are called to him so we, we have nothing to fear. God also reminds us that um, because the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish for his mercies never end. They are new every morning we have to cling to that we have to stand on that god will give you strength for every battle wisdom for every decision peace that surpasses all understanding stay faithful where you are keep a good attitude and when things aren't happening as fast as you would like or things don't go in your in the way you would like them to go don't get frustrated do not fall victim to your flesh right God um, David uh, in the Bible David says God my times are in your hands we have to stay faithful trust God's timing trust um, his word stand on it right and follow it no matter how hard it is I know um, I felt myself you know telling God I was like you know sometimes I know what to do but it's just hard to do it Sometimes it's just hard to do it, especially if my heart isn't there yet. And God told me, do it anyway. Your, your, your emotions and your feelings, they can't be trusted. Don't trust your feelings and your emotions over me. Trust God. Trust what he is telling us to do. Because it'll work out better for us if we do it that way. When I think about failure and my failure, one story uh, in the Bible that comes to mind is um, the story of Peter and how he denied Jesus. Um, you know, we know that story. We know that Jesus predicted Peter would deny him three times. Um, but how did Peter react? He uh, denied that he would deny Christ, right? Um, he instead said, you know, that he would be willing to die for Christ. Um, and then after his failure, Peter felt the weight of his sin and he wept. He wept. You know, how often does temptation hide um, hide the word of God from us, you know, only to bring it back up immediately after we fail? every time right every single time it does um you know in the days between jesus's death and resurrection you know peter's mind uh, you know wandered back and back through the the years when jesus gave instructions to his disciples you know and i'm sure jesus's words echoed in his ears um matthew 10 and 33 god um god says that he says, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father in heaven. And I'm sure Peter must have thought, you know, that's it. You know, I've done it. Like, oh my gosh, that's it. I'm out. There's no forgiveness for someone like me. And I know many times when I fail God, when, I, when I'm when i obedient and I don't do what God's told me to do, um, which has happened. Um, and also when, you know, when I'm not intentionally trying to be obedient or if I'm just failing to my flesh and not listening to the Holy Spirit, I feel that way. Those thoughts come over my mind like, oh my goodness, like, how can I recover from this? How can I uh, get back up? But as I mentioned earlier, you know, God, God knows everything. He knows everything about us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And just like he knew Peter would deny him, he knows that we're going to fail too. Um, and, and God knew Peter's special need for hope. He knew that Peter would deny him three times. And he also knew that Peter would need, um, have a special need for hope, you know, um, and, and and in that, uh, the last time that Peter looked at Jesus, he, he had failed God, you know? Um, and then the next time that he saw him, he was looking in the eyes of a resurrected Lord and Savior and saw forgiveness. You know, you know, just imagine that for a moment. You know, imagine that that moment of grace and forgiveness and reconciliation and peace. You know, yes, 
yes, you failed. Yes, I failed. We've all failed. But God isn't done with us yet. Um, You know, there's still more work to be done. What that does is that shows you you're not as strong as you thought. You still have work to be done. There's still more um, refining and restoration and things like that that God has to do. You know, um, you thought you were strong, but you just weren't tested. Your strength wasn't tested. But now that it's been tested, it just shows, okay, I got more work to do. God still has more to do on me. You know, he's working on all of us daily. Don't give up hope. Don't give up on God. Like I said before. Before. This is just your cue to, okay, I need to pray more. Okay, I need to fast harder. You know, I need to continue to crucify my flesh. I need to go harder at this because the devil is going to try to use your failure as something for you to stop, to, to put you in guilt and shame to make you feel like, you know, it's over, but it's not. That's a lie of the enemy. This just means I need to press harder into Christ. I need to seek him more. I need to talk to him more. I need to be at his feet more so I can learn. I can I can uh, get to know him better and trust him and learn his word and have it stored in my heart more. There's no getting around it. We're all going to fail God. All of us. You, me, everybody. You know, whatever the circumstances is, whatever the specifics is, you and I are destined to fill and living up to God's standards. But how we respond to the failure is up to us. We can either let it destroy us and distance us from God, or we can let it be a lesson, learn from it, and bring us closer to God. That's what I'm choosing to do, and I, and I hope that you do the same Either way, failure can be a powerful force in our lives, either which way you choose to go. Um, I encourage you to look at the stories of Peter, look more into the story of Peter and also uh, Judah. Um, We know what Judas did um, as well. He failed Jesus as well. And thanks to Judas' betrayal, you know, the very hands that washed his feet were pierced by nails the next day. So I encourage you to read those stories. You know, God, God loves us and his grace is forever his mercy is forever your failure does not stop you and doesn't determine what God thinks about you and it doesn't stop what you're going for that's the that's what I really want to drive home you failing does not stop the plan you're still going to be the woman of God God that God created you to be. You're still going to be the the wife God created you to, you to be. You're still going to be the mother God created you to be. You're still going to be that businesswoman. You're still going to accomplish everything that God put in your heart's desire to accomplish. It's not going to stop. This failure is going to make you stronger and better, but it, it's up to you how you choose to react to it. Hello, Courageous Wives. Before we get to our confession for today, I do have to interrupt. I'm so sorry, but you will thank me later because I'm here to tell you about this amazing platform, Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. So if you're like me and you have a lot to say or you have a lot in your mind and you just want to get it off your chest, maybe starting a podcast is something that you can do too. It's free. Um, There's creation tools that allows you to record, distribute, and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Um, And Anchor will also help you distribute your podcast so that you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. Um, You can make money from your podcast with minimum listenership. I mean, that's super cool, right? Especially if you're just starting out like me. Um, It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, back to it. Today's affirmation. I am a fountain of blessing to my husband. We rejoice in each other. My husband and I are one flesh and no one can tear that apart. Lord, help me to set a guard over my mouth and keep a watch door for my lips, according to Psalms 141 and 3.